Thank you for tuning in to our channel, to our class, ABC, this morning. May God's richest blessing rest upon you as you listen to His Word today. My text is taken from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to verse 24. It says here, Wives, submit to your husband as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the saviour of the body. Therefore, just as the church is submit to Christ, so let the wives be to their husband in everything. Keep your hand right here in Ephesians chapter 5, please. And let us look to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Dear King and Master, we thank you for the time that we can spend sitting right at your feet and learn from your word today. May you anoint me as I teach this morning and anoint those who hear as well. In Jesus' mighty and awesome name we pray. All God's people say, Amen and Amen. Today, my topic is on biblical role of a godly wife. Biblical role of a godly wife. So what is the biblical role of a wife? Let's read verse 22. It says here, Wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. So what is the biblical role of a godly wife? It is to submit. That's the role of a godly wife. There's only one thing that a wife needs to do in marriage, and that is to submit to her husband. Now before you get upset or jump the gun, and start shooting arrows or bullets at me, let me say this. God sure know what is best for you as wives. Isn't that so? So if you are a wise and godly woman, you will abide and follow what God says. And I can guarantee you right here, if you do that, you will have less stress, less quarrel, and fights right in the family. So this morning, as we look into these three simple verses, I have two outlines for you. First of all, I'm going to talk about the reviews. The reviews on submission. Why talk on the reviews? Because this subject on submission is not new to us. Am I right? Everybody knows it. I think if you have been Christian long enough, you will hear this topic being taught again and again behind the pulpit. And it is just like what the book of Ecclesiastes says, that there is nothing new under the sun. But what I'm going to do this morning is this, that we are going to take a fresh look at submission all over again. By the way, that's what review means. There are two words which we have to be very clear in our mind when it comes to the word submission. We need to understand and we need to distinguish what we are spiritually and what we are functionally. First of all, let us look at the word 
spiritually. Now, as far as God's word is concerned, spiritually speaking, the moment we get saved, we are ushered right into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of God, and we become one family. And because of the one act of Christ at the cross, we become safe. And the result was, we all stand equal with each other in God's sight. No matter who you are in the world, so there is the equality right there. This is like what Galatians 3.28 says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave nor free, there's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now let us look at this verse again. It says, there's neither Jew nor Greek. That is what? That is national. There's neither slave nor free. That is social. There's neither male nor female. That is physical. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. This means, and spiritually speaking, we are all on the same plane. We are all equal in God's sight. So that's spiritually. Now, the second word which I want you to pay attention on, and that's the word called functionally. Yes, spiritually speaking, we are all the same. We all stand equal before God. But the moment you take them out from the church, from God's family, and place them right in the context of a home, a family setting, straight away our position and roles and function begins to change. Now, we are husband and wives living in the home with children all around us and so on and so forth. Now we have jobs to do, things to fulfill, roles to play in the home. I hope you can see that. That's called functional. And this is what Paul says at verse 22, addressing to the wife, he says, Wives, submit to, submit to your own husband as unto the Lord. So the same God that made us equal in his sight, it's also the same God that gives the husband and the wives roles to play in the homes. So what is the biblical role of a godly wife? It is submission. Let us look firstly at number one, God's assignment. God's assignment for the wife. Verse 22a. Her job and her task in the home is to submit to her husband. That's her God's ordained position as a wife in a marriage. That's her primary duty as a wife in the home. Only one thing, only one role. She is to do only one thing if she is married, and that is to submit. I know many of you will say, submit? Submit to my husband? Impossible. No way. I'm not going to do that. Do you know what era are we living in today? Today we are all equal. Man and woman are all the same now. You see, that's what I have already said earlier. Spiritually speaking, if we are Christian, whether we are male or female, we all stand equal in God's sight. But when we come to a home, we differ in our role and function. As you can see it, wife is to submit, 
husband is to love. Now, God could have reversed the order, can't he? He could have said to the husband, Husband, submit to your wife as to the Lord. Am I right? But he didn't say that. Why? Because submission is something which women find very hard to do. And guess what? Submission is precisely what the husband is looking for today. This is what men are looking for in women. They are looking for a submissive wife. So if you are a submissive person, it is a plus point for you. Amen? And this is the reason why God is asking wives to submit to their husband. So we have talked on number one, God's assignment. Now let us look at God's arrangement. God's arrangement. Now what do I mean by God's arrangement? You see in scripture, everything that is there in his word has all been arranged by God. Nothing is there by chance or by accident. All scripture has been put there and arranged in such a way for a reason and for a purpose. Now let me show this to you. Are you ready? Now let us look first of all at the husband and wife relationship first. Since it comes first on the list. Now, the whole section here can be from chapter 5, verse 22, right down to verse 33. Now, see carefully, who did God address first, husband or wife? Look at verse 22. It was the wife first. Am I right? God talked to the wife first. In other words, God wants the wife to initiate the move first in the home, and that is to submit to her man. Then come to verse 25, God turned to the man, and God said to the man, you must love your wife. Because I know wife, they always like to argue, you know, like to argue. They will tell the husband, you love me first, then I will submit. But God said, no, you submit first. Then the reciprocal response from the husband will be love. Can you see that? Do you know why so many marriages are broken down today? Why so many marriages ended up in divorce? It all start off right from this verse at verse 22. It is because wives don't want to submit to their husband. Now, this doesn't mean the wife will become a yes person. This doesn't mean you cannot voice out your emotion or your opinions. No, it doesn't mean that. It means after voicing out your opinions and ideas, the final decision will be decided by the husband. That's what headship means. So what we have seen, is that God addressing the wife first, that she will be the one that initiate the move first in the area of submission, then followed by the husband, and that is to love his wife. Now, if you don't believe, next, let us read concerning the parent and children relationship. Now, see carefully, right at chapter 6, verse 1. Who actually did God Talk to first, right in this section. It was the children, am I right? If you look at chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That's what children need to do. Obey your parents. For it says here at verse 1, For this is right. Then it goes on to talk to the parents, right at chapter 6, verse 4. Then when come to the slave, and master relationship. What do you see here? Same thing. Am I right? He started off by talking to the slave or to the employees. Right at verse 5. Bond servant, be obedient to those 
who are your master according to the flesh. Then after talking to the slave, then go talk to the boss or to the master or to the employers. Right at chapter 6, verse 9. So can you see the pattern? The arrangement here. He always start right from the bottom, telling those who are below to submit and to obey those who are above or over them. Am I right? So we have touched on the reviews on submission. The reviews on submission. Now come to my second point, which is my last point. The reasons. The reasons for submission. Why did God want wives to submit to their husband? And those of you who are wives, will ask this question, why? Why we have to submit? Now here, in these three verses, from verses 22 to verses 24, He, that is God, gave us four reasons, four reasons as to why wives have to submit to their own husband. Now let me start off with the first reason. Reason number one. Why wives have to submit to their husband. Number one, the first reason is because submission is his delight. His delight. Do you know whenever wives chose to submit to their husband, it brings delight to the heart of Christ. Look at verse 22. It says here, Wives, submit to your husband, to your own husband. As to who? as to the Lord. So this means when you submit yourself to your husband, you are indirectly submit yourself to Christ. Do you understand that? Do you know this verse can read like this? Wives, submit to your own husband and then full stop. Am I right? But it wasn't written that way. It says here, wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. So nothing brings more joy to the heart of Christ than to see submission in the lives of his people. So when there is disobedience and rebellion in the heart of God's people, that's where it grieves his heart. I'm sure you can remember what God said in 1 Samuel 15, 23. God said to King Saul, for rebellion, rebellion means going against, giving resistance. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. It's like practicing black magic, you know. And it says stubbornness. That means refusal to budge, to change, is as iniquity and idolatry. It's like worshipping idols. That's what lack of submission means. Then number two, let me give you the second reason as to why submission is so important. It is because that was his decision. His decision. His decision is clearly spelled out Right at verse 23. And what did the word of God say at verse 23? For the husband is head of the wife. So also Christ is head of the church. Can you see here? It is God's decision to make man to be head over his wife. Do you want to challenge that? I know many Women in the world will, they are challenging that. They call it what? Woman's liberation. Woman's right. Or feminist movement. What are they fighting for? They are fighting for the rights to be equal with men. But that's not what God intended for. Look at what God said in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. But I want you to know that the head of every man 
Every man is who? Is Christ. The head of woman is who? Is man. The head of Christ is who? It is God. This goes the same in marriage. Somebody got to be the head. In our case here, God had chosen the husband to be the head over the wife, as what verse 23 says. There can be no two heads in a family. If there are two heads in the family or in the home, there will be fights, anarchy, and disorder. In commerce, in industry, and in workplace, somebody got to be the head. Somebody got to lead. And the rest follow. But why God chose the man to take the lead? To be the head of the family. Have you ever thought of that? Why God didn't choose the woman to be the head instead? Am I right? Why he chose the man? Because there was God's choice. There was his decision all along. Look back. Right in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 27. It says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and then female, he created them. So God created the man first, and then he proceeded to create the woman second. That's the creation order. You and I know what happened in Genesis chapter 2. Everything went well, am I right? But not until Genesis chapter 3, the serpent, the devil, came along and taught the woman to take the lead and to take the decision to her own hand. And the result was what? The result was the fall and the sin. And after the fall, this was what God said to the woman in Genesis 3 verse 16. To the woman, God said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Then God goes on to say, your desire, saying to the woman, shall be for your husband. And notice what? He shall rule over you. He shall rule over you. That's what God said. Now, I know many women don't like to hear that. And some men who hear this took advantage of the whole situation and began to say to the wife, I shall rule over you. That's what the Bible says. Then they began to mistreat their wives and they became tyrant in the home. No, that's not what God intended man to be. Man by right should lead his wife and his home with love, but not with an iron face. Amen? Not so much about that. Let's move on, shall we? Let's move on to our third point. The third reason as to why submission is so important is because of his defense. Read verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, so also Christ is the head of the church, and he is, look at the word, present tense, and he is the savior of the body. The body here means the church. Jesus saves. Amen? Jesus not only saves us from our sin, from hell, from the devil, he also saves us from dangers. Wife, that's what husbands are for. They are there to protect you. When you're submissive to them, they will go all out to protect you. The same way just as Christ will. Just as Christ is the head of the church, he will protect his church, his body. No harm will come on you. No harm will come on the church. 
if we are submissive to God and to Christ. And that's why submission is so important. Practice it. Wives, practice it. Your husband will love it. And he will love you double, triple, and manifold. Believe me, they will. So we have touched on the, his delight, his decision, his defense. Now come to the last reason as to why submission is so important. It is because of his design. His design. Verse 24. It says, Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be. Let the wives be to their own husband in everything. That is his design. Now take a good look at the church worldwide. All over the world. That means millions and millions of believers out there, both in heaven and on earth, all pay their allegiance to Christ. They all submitting to Him and to His Lordship. Then it's the same way Paul says to the wife, let the wives also do the same to her husband in everything. Now, why women? Why wives have to submit to their own husband in everything? Now, here is the reason. So that through her life and through her submissive spirit, she won't bring reproach, disgrace, and blasphemy to Christ and to His name. That's the reason. And because of this, I'd like to close with this one verse found in Titus chapter 2, verse 3 to verse 5. Listen carefully. God is talking to the older women in the church. Paul said, The older women, likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderous, not given to much wine, but teachers of good things, that they admonish the younger women to do what? Number one, to love their husband first. Then number two, to love their children. Then number three, to be discreet. Discreet means careful in the way you conduct yourself, the way you speak, the way you act, right in the church and outside the church. Then next, it says chase. Means abstain from any extra marital sex outside the framework of of marriage. This means she won't fool around outside or play a fool outside. Then next is a homemakers good and take note of the next sentence. He say obedient to their own husband. Can you see that? Teaching the younger women to be obedient to their own husband. Why? So that the word of God may not be blasphemed. And that's the whole idea of submission that comes from the behavior and the example of a godly wife. Let me end here. We will talk about the biblical role of a godly husband in our next lesson. Shall we pray? Dear King and Lord, thank you for teaching us today. Help us to take on this instruction seriously right to our hearts and we look to you that you will give us your strength so that we can put these things into practice in Christ's great name we pray all God's people say amen and amen God bless you amen <music>